<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is I, your founder and chairman of Hold My Nuggets Incorporated. We are currently in the West Wing once again, live in Hold My Nuggets Studios for your sixth annual NFL season Chiseled Adonis Awards, and I am indeed your host, the diligent, vigilant, meticulous, sagacious, conscientious, analytical, methodical, individual, the Chiseled Adonis, and I am ecstatic to be here. Why? Not only to cover the 2022 NFL season, but we have also taken care of the Nancy problem. You understand? She will not be anywhere to be found this year infiltrating the premises because we made sure we took care Nancy and we sent her where sent Nancy what to the upper room oh Nancy what in the upper room oh she wouldn't dare come over here or hit her with the chair Nancy is where in the upper room oh singing what it's not said Nancy what in the upper rooms hey Nancy Nancy what in the upper room, we sent her where she wouldn't dare come over here, hit her with the chair. Nancy is where? In the upper room, we took care of the Nancy problem so we can enjoy ourselves for the remainder of this evening as we cover what transpired in the 2022 NFL season. But of course, this year is going to be a little different. We may not have the same amount of awards that we've had in the past. We may have new awards that we introduce here this current year. Yeah! Yeah! Furthermore, there are a couple of categories that deserve their own spotlight this year, and it's only right that we shine a light on the absolute tomfoolery of what transpired during last year's NFL season, starting with these ginormous hats. I believe it was Brian Robinson, many men, who started the entire trend of bringing in these noggin bars, customized hats. So, of course, I had to go out and get my own customized, chiseled Adonis hats. I bought two, so... so so they, they, they may be a giveaway for one. There's, there's another one. I don't know if I want to do it. Y'all let me know in the comment section if you'd like the second customized Noggin Boss ginormous chiseled Adonis cap. Let it be known in the comment section. But of course, we ain't talking about that right now. Let it be known in the comment section. But we must begin tonight's award show, I believe, the same way that we began it last year. And that's with the absolute tomfoolery of a performance of the officials. The referees had made terrible calls all season long, postseason long. I recognize a lot of people would like me to discuss what transpired in the Super Bowl, but I covered it back to back years. I might add there were controversial calls at the conclusion of the Super Bowl games, but I covered them in each individual Super Bowl video. However, for this year's Chiseled Adonis Awards, I want to take a moment to shine a light on a few of the worst calls this season by these terrible zebras. And here we go. We've been trying to reach you concerning your car's extended warranty. Ah! He's sacked from behind by Chris Jones. Foul, foul. What happened? Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. We're not too sure what a sack is anymore, but damn it. First down, Raiders. Come on! Come on! They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. This is now back-to-back -back games with piss-poor roughing the passer calls. Chris Jones takes down Derek Carr, but evidently he put his full weight on the quarterback when getting the sack. He forced a fumble. Who gives a fuck about the weight on the quarterback? The football is loose. First Grady Jarrett, now Chris Jones. This is absolutely ludicrous. Did that really happen? I thought it was a bad dream after eating too many raw hot dogs. He's fat! Year by year, they take away what defenders can do to the quarterback. It's getting ludicrous out here. Either eliminate the sack and just start blowing the whistle whenever anybody exhales on their shoulder pads. Because this is a clear strip sack, but now it's going to be an automatic first down for Las Vegas. Why? Because fuck them, that's why. This is minute you already know manscaped is a premium brand when it comes to men's grooming and they just took things to another level let me introduce you to their brand new handyman compact face shaver now you know i'm all about finding the best products to make our grooming routines easier and more effective and let me tell you the handyman does exactly that 
Say goodbye to patchy beards and hello to a clean, well-groomed appearance. The Handyman delivers a quick, close shave with a unique dual-blade system. And of course, it features skin-safe technology and it's waterproof. And I know what you're thinking, but what about the battery life? The Handyman can run for 60 minutes on a single charge. And to make matters even better, the Handyman is airplane friendly. Given its compact size and rechargeable battery, you can take the Handyman wherever you want to go. That means you'll have more than enough time for multiple shaves without worrying about running out of power. And when it comes to performance, the Handyman is a beast when it comes to tackling up to three day growth. And guess what? I got a special offer just for you. Go to manscaped.com slash chisel and get 20% off your purchase of the Handyman. So what are you waiting for? Upgrade your grooming routine right now. Click the link in my description and go to manscaped.com slash chisel and save 20% off on your order of the Handyman. Your face will thank you. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Third and five, the Falcons need a stop. Grady Jarrett comes in for the sack on Brady. The Falcons gonna get the football back. Foul, foul. He touched me. You ain't gotta say another word, old man. Nani? So what do you guys think we should do? Tom Brady said we need to throw a flag, so what do you got in mind? How about we throw a roughing the passer flag? That's impossible. It was a regular sack. Are you team Brady or team just help? Roughing the passer on the defense. He he hit Brady, so we got to keep the game going. Um, Fuck you guys. First down, Bucks. Somebody explain to me, in what world is this roughing the passer? Jarrett comes in and gets the most clean sack, routine textbook sack you'll ever see. Somehow, this is qualified as excessive force that'll give Tampa an automatic first down. I really don't understand what's happening in the NFL, bro. This is the softest roughing the passer call I think I've ever seen. And we've seen some bad ones over the years. But this right here is ludicrous because Atlanta has scored. 15 unanswered points. They're trying to mount a comeback to defeat Tom Brady for the first time in franchise history. And all of their momentum is stifled because of this bullshit call. To make matters worse, they only had one timeout left. So two first downs ends the game for them. And that's exactly what happened. They lost because the referees called what is the worst roughing the passer call we've ever seen. Forget somebody getting fined. Forget somebody getting fired. Somebody needs to be fucking shot for this. Wait a minute. It's just well in the referee. 37 seconds left to play for Derek Vehicle going deep down the field. Got his man. That's Keelan and Cal Cole participating in the 10 toes down challenge for the Raiders touchdown to even up the score at 24 all. But I got a question. How the fuck did the referees rule this a catch when his second toe is clearly out of boots? All scoring plays are reviewed. So these motherfuckers went to the booth and still called this a touchdown. That brother's foot touching more white than the NBA drafts top. 10 projections choice in women if only there was a guy who did a three-part series on what a catch in the nfl was we wouldn't have this problem for whatever reason we still cannot seem to identify what is a catch in the nfl despite the fact that they review extensively these catches on scoring plays or if it happens to be a turnover they extensively review it and somehow still tend to get it wrong and furthermore we still have a roughing the passer problem you mean to tell me a routine tackle on a quarterback that would be categorized as a sack or if the quarterback releases the football it'd be categorized as a quarterback hit somehow these are still roughing the passer regular tackles are considered roughing the passer we still have officials who don't understand the way football is to be played and the worst call of the year by far in my opinion is what happened out in washington third and goal for washington hand off to brian mini men robinson into the end zone touchdown DJ Spin mini men mini 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 men wish that for me though i don't cry no 
illegal shift on the offense, number 17. Do that. Talk about getting screwed. Terry McLaurin checked in with the referee. He said that he was perfectly fine and proceeded to hold his waist. He couldn't wait to throw the flag. Foul, foul. And you know what's even worse about the situation? You can clearly see Terry McLaurin is lined up illegally here. But he checks with the referee after the ref actually verbally told him to move up. So McLaurin moved up, put up the thumbs up. The referee confirmed that he was good, only to still throw the flag anyway. It's one thing to line up illegally and not recognize. It's another thing if you lined up illegally, the referee told you to move up, said you were fine, and still flagged you anyway. Somebody check his bank statements. He must have had the job. Giants on the money line. Washington's backed up five yards, third and goal. Heineke looking towards his right, trying to find Gibson, throws it into the dirt, and we've got a fourth and goal situation for the game. Heineke takes the snap, game on the line, extending the play once more, looking towards his left, got a man in the end zone. What the fuck? No flags on the field. The commanders are going to lose. The Giants take the W. How in the world is this not called defensive pass interference? Mans was getting embraced from behind against his will. The official is standing right there. If this ain't pass interference, I don't know what is. The commanders get screwed and the Giants steal one in the nation's capital. Fuck the law. Fuck the law. I don't need to go into detail on what transpired because you heard it in the clip, but let me tell you something right now. For me to every single official who just so happens to frequent the NFL, I promise you, if we continue to have this problem persist, if we continue to have these terrible calls year in, year out, week in, week out, month in, month out, season in, season out, there will be a platoon of individuals at all of your front doors. We will be sponsored by Ed Hockley's Biceps and Triceps. And we will give your noggins a flogging. And if that's not enough for you, we gonna call in our special reinforcements, Steve. saw that right because I'm sending stone cold Steve Austin to every single official's house if they continue this absolute debauchery on Sundays, Thursdays, Mondays, Saturdays on special occasions and if we just so happen to have another pandemic Tuesdays, Wednesdays or whatever other day that we happen to play football but we ain't talking about that right now. As for everybody else in the NFL, you gonna have to deal with me and we gonna start with what was once titled the Nick Folk Put Your Motherfucking Head back down award for absolute terrible kickers but we just got to shine a light on a terrible sequence that transpired in week one of last year's season it was shades of what happened in week two between the Packers and the Cincinnati Bengals and what do you know Cincinnati's involved again they come from behind and on my watch the extra points blocked we're going to overtime not at 20 apiece because both the Cincinnati Bengals and the Pittsburgh Steelers in the opening game of the NFL season for both respective clubs refused to win the game off of the toes of both Chris Boswell and Evan McPherson. 29 yards out, McPherson shakes it to the left. It's no good. It's no good. The game continues. A few moments later. Following the miss, here come the Steelers. Mitch, I'm not a bitch. Trubisky looking left. Got Deontay Johnson. Holy shit. One hand catch on the sideline. This man can catch Queen Elizabeth's soul before she goes to her eternal resting place. From 55 yards out. Boswell for the win. It's... He doinked it. He doinked it. He doinked it. Son of a... How could you miss the... Do either of these teams want to win? This is a replay of last year's Green Bay, Cincinnati. 
A few moments later. From 53 yards out, the last killer be standing, boots it through the uprights, and it's good. Pittsburgh walks into Cincinnati and pulls off an improbable victory in one of the wildest season openers of all time. You just can't bet against the power of Black Air Force energy. They missed the collective three kicks between the two of them. There was one that was blocked before the conclusion of regulation, and then they both happened to miss back to back in overtime, but Chris Boswell came through in the clutch and won the game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You would have thought I handed out the award to these individuals, but oh no, it was just a sequence I wanted you guys to see, because the real Cody Parkey put your motherfucking head back down award goes to none other than Eddie Pinero. First and ten trailing by six. Meet the PJ's Walker rolling towards his left. Launching the football from his own 35. He's got his favorite DJ Moore in the end zone. Heavens to Betsy. Hail Mary for the win. Touchdown Carolina. But there's laundry on the field. Ain't no way. Ain't no fucking Clitoris alert, clitoris alert, woo, woo, clitoris alert, clitoris alert, woo, woo, woo. This nincompoop DJ Moore couldn't wait an additional 10 seconds to make it to the sideline. He had to take off his helmet after catching the greatest pass of his career and then costing his team 15 yards because he thought he scored the game-winning touchdown as if they don't have to kick an extra point to take the lead. So Eddie Panero would have to boot it from further and he shanks it wide. To the left, no good. We're going to overtime. Five. Nothing to worry about. That's a hard kick to make. Pre-game, you were taking selfies. No way you miss another kick, especially in overtime. Right, Eddie? No way that happens, right? Into overtime, we go to birthday boy looking for the win straight out the gate. Going down the field, got a man. Wahoo! But he plays for the other team. Pass intercepted by the Panthers. Returned all the way inside the 20. They're in field goal range to end this game. And how fitting. Nobody on the field is happier than DJ Moore. After getting that taunting penalty, removing his helmet for unsportsmanlike conduct, the Panthers have the football for the game-winning kick from the same distance of an extra point. Mariota's going to lose on his birthday. Panero from 33 for the win shakes it wide to the left boy ain't no fucking way boy eddie eddie how you spent all pre-game working on selfies rather than working on your kick you missed in regulation granted it was from a further distance but now you were kicking from extra point distance for the game winning kick in overtime and you shanked it wide to the left man's missed the kick so bad so wide to the left the team considered amputating his foot on the field with the game on the line he decided to dress up as Blair Walsh for Halloween Eddie Panero, put your motherfucking head back down, you goddamn bum. And you too, DJ Moore. This is all your fault. You probably don't even find yourself in this scenario if your dumbass keeps your helmet on, you goddamn nincompoop. The birthday boy Mariota would drive the Falcons down the field, put them in field goal range for R. Kelly's favorite kind of woman. Some young hoku puts it through the uprights, and it's good. The Falcons wanted to choke. You see, DJ Moore is a clitoris alert nominee but Eddie Panero's goofy ass was out here taking selfies, taking videos for his Instagram story prior to the game rather than working on his kicking. And when it was the clutch time for him to come through, despite the foolishness of DJ Moore taking off his helmet, this man misses not only the field goal, the extra point at the conclusion of regulation, he misses the field goal from extra point distance in overtime. So as far as I'm concerned, sir, you drive automatic because there will never be clutch in your car. You are an absolute flop. You are not clutch. When the lights come on, sir, you do not perform. That's why they shifted you out of Chicago after Cody Parkey done double doinked his way out of the NFL. One way or another, from me to you, Eddie Panero, and everybody in the comment section, we're not going to channel LA Night, but I need you guys to say what we've said over the course of the last six years because I need everybody in unison, everybody saying, Eddie Panero!
Put your motherfucking head back down, you goddamn bum. You are the 2022 Cody Parky Put Your Motherfucking Head Back Down award winner, you goofy motherfucker, you. I've got to get my dick sucked. Moving on, we're going to keep the momentum going in this year's Chiseled Adonis Awards, and we've got yet another heavy hitting award because it's time for the woo woo clearance alert, clearance alert, woo woo clearance alert, clearance alert, woo 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 award for 2022. And we've had a number of bonehead plays throughout the entire season. And guess what? I'm not even going to have to select one. I'm going to leave this to the audience to select. But I will give you your four nominees. We already saw DJ Moore. So he's going to be excluded, but he will be included. He's just not going to be in this four-piece compilation. So it's really five. Let it be known in the comment section who you believe deserves the Clitoris Award for 2022. But take a look at these dumbass motherfuckers. Two minutes left to go in Seattle. Third and two. Wilson's got his man. And first down, keep their drive alive. Get out of bounds, stupid. What are you doing? 125 on the clock, first and 10. Russell Wilson shovel pass over to Williams. He's tackled for a loss. Lying. My leg, you look at this dude. Look at the top of his head. Third and 14, 111 left to play. Wilson takes the snap, looking towards his left. He's got his man. He's not going to get a first down, but he makes it fourth and five. They've got three timeouts left. Why are they not calling timeout? It looks like they're going no huddle. That's no problem. There's 35 seconds left on the play clock. Why are they walking like Donovan McNabb and the Eagles in Super Bowl 39? You're losing by one. You're not in field goal range. Russell Wilson must think there's more time on the clock. Why the fuck they getting in a huddle you got three timeouts left they're wasting time here the previous play was over with 102 left on the clock seattle's making all kinds of noise maybe they're gonna try to draw them off sides but why would you do that while wasting the entire duration of the play clock russell wilson's got his chain out what the hell are they doing 25 seconds left to play just for the Motherfuckers to not even call a play. They used the timeout anyway. Nathaniel Hackett's first season as a head coach and his very first game, this nincompoop is showcasing terrible time management. If you got three timeouts in your pocket, you fuck. Can use them. And to make matters worse, they're not even going to attempt to go for it on fourth and five when they traded to get Russell Wilson. You don't have a franchise quarterback with a game on the line and leave him on the sideline to try what would be the NFL's second longest field goal. McManic's kick is up, and it's no good. Wide to the left. The Broncos are going to lose. Russell Wilson doesn't get vengeance because of this motherfucker right here. This ain't preseason. This not a scrimmage. This is NFL football. There's a shit ton of things on the line here. And you try a 64-yarder with the game on the line when you don't have to? Like you don't got Mr. Unlimited on your sideline? <laughs> then this salty motherfucker, rather than just let the Seattle Seahawks kneel it out, he uses both his remaining timeouts for absolutely no reason. Should have used them a minute ago, you fucking nincompoop. Poop. Seattle wins. Geno's grabbing butt cheeks. Fucking quiz. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And the Seattle Seahawks upset the Denver Broncos, spoil the return of Russell Wilson, and take a 17-16 victory on primetime television. They wrote me off. I ain't right back, though. That's the problem. I ain't right back. Let's go. What kind of formation is this? I don't know. Is that Ezekiel Elliott at center? Maybe they're going to try to throw a screen. Zeke snaps the football and gets eliminated. Dax pass to Turpin is caught, but Turpin speared, and the clock expires. The Niners are headed back to the NFC Championship. Dallas, on one of the most retarded plays I've ever seen in my life, lose their seventh consecutive divisional game. And for the 27th consecutive consecutive year do not make it to the nfc championship but they f around and got into the playoffs so the more you f around the more you're gonna find out <laughs> zero 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 never 
in my days have I ever seen a dumbass play like this when you need to go the length of the field to tie and force overtime. These motherfuckers put their running back at center, lined up all they linemen spread, and decided to not throw the football where their blockers were located. What exactly was the game plan here? Because it didn't appear as if anybody was trying to set up a hook and ladder. Dak was the only person in the vicinity of Cavante Turpin, and he was seven yards away, so you couldn't have possibly thought to throw a lateral. To make matters even worse, you have T.Y. Hilton at the bottom of the screen with what would be three lead blockers and only one person on that side of the field because there's seven 49ers on the far side of the screen. What was the purpose of spreading out the linemen if you weren't even going to use them? Look at the helmets of everybody in a 49ers jersey. They're not even paying T.Y. Hilton at the bottom of the screen any mind. If there was somebody to throw the football to, it would be him. They're all staring at C.D. Lamb, but Dak throws it to Cavante Turpin in the middle of the field where danger awaits, no timeouts remaining. What the fuck was this play call? This is why they say Dallas is garbage. This is why they constantly hate on your franchise, because you do stupid shit like this. Hit the music. I really need to know what was going through their mind, bro. Do you recognize this is gonna be the last memory that we ever have of Ezekiel Elliott in a Cowboys uniform? They had this man line up at center. What was going through their minds? They decided to go line up and say, we them boy, it don't matter what formation we come out in. We get thick. We got Dick, there we had a D.D. Lane. We don't need no lineman. Dick is gonna lead us to the promised land. He gonna throw it over to Turpin. And then after that, we gonna find the end zone. Is that what happened? Is that what happened? It's not. If they tried to do a hook and ladder, they should have gave it to somebody behind some type of protection. It's made no sense. Easily one of the dumbest plays I ever seen in my life. You know what? Let me not even get into it. I'ma lose my mind. I'ma lose my mind. I don't understand. I don't understand. Last year we lose the San Francisco. This year we lose the San Francisco. Why can't we go back to the NFC Championship? I thought it was gonna be different because we got that. We got Deke, we let go of Amari Cooper. C.D. Lamb had a magnificent season. Dalton Stoltz, he did good. We had Ferguson, the emergency of Tony Tony Tapapala. We had on defense, Micah Puffin, Tank Lawrence, Trevor Diggs, Bland, Van Der Es, and somehow we was their boot, but not in the postseason. We beat Gordon Brady. If you beat the goal, you're supposed to win championship. Last year, if the Rams, they beat the goal. They win the Lombardi two years ago. Tennessee beat the goal. They made it to the championship game three years ago. Eagle beat the goal. They win Super Bowl. Seven year Bronco, they win Super Bowl. I don't understand. It was supposed to be it. It was supposed to be it. We were supposed to get Nick Ring. Big ring, big ring, big ring, big ring, big ring. We need to put the beat in by. Rated by One Family Magazine, number one clown, nine straight years. Only one will know the football. Are you kidding me? That's pride, not a catch, really? That's funny. <laughs>
Woo, woo, clitoris alert, clitoris alert. Woo, woo, clitoris alert, clitoris alert. Woo, woo, woo. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense. Number seven put his hands on a coach. Look at Matt LaFleur. Look at Matt LaFleur. This man is sick. You got to be a special kind of dumbass in a game that you need to win to make the postseason to push a goddamn athletic trainer trying to make sure that his player is healthy and you get yourself ejected. Who raised you, you goddamn idiot? Somebody take him out back and pelt him with seven scrotums then throw nothing but tomatoes at this man stone him with empty bottles of lotion eviscerate his shoulder pads helmet and cleats with the highest level of fires teabag him with the heaviest sumo wrestlers on the planet get him the fuck out of here and now look at this nincompoop getting ejected for his second time this season in the most important game of his career Headed to the locker room, crying, looking like a bitch. Uh oh, retard alert! Retard alert, class! Woo woo, clitoris alert, clitoris alert! Woo woo, clitoris alert, clitoris alert! Woo woo woo! Last couple seconds, the Patriots just gonna run the clock out and head to overtime. Ramondre Stevenson breaking a couple of tackles. The dreadlock power's on display. He's inside the third. He laterals over to Jacoby Myers. Why is he going backwards? He throws it towards Mac Jones. Yahoo. Intercepted by Chandler Jones. He stiff arms Mac Jones into the shadow realm. He's headed into the end zone. The Raiders are going to win. The Raiders are going to win on an absolute tomfoolery of a play. What the fuck did we just see? I've never seen anything like this in my life. This is some more bullshit. Dude, what the fuck? This is the biggest blunder in football history since Jim Marshall ran the wrong way. Bill Belichick better be walking over to fire that brother on the field. It's an away game. You don't even board the team plane. You're going to have to walk back to Boston to collect your things. There's no convincing me otherwise that Jacoby Myers had the Raiders on the money line on what's the final play of regulation. It doesn't even appear as if the Patriots are confident they're going to make it to the end zone. Ramondre Stevenson would create a little bit of hope and somehow take it inside the 35. Then he would lateral it to Jacoby Myers, but this is what I don't understand. He jammed his controller so far to the right, he's going to be voting Republican for the next 83 years. He ran backwards six yards for what reason? To make matters worse. He threw it an additional 10 yards straight to Chandler Jones, who just so happens to be 6 foot 5, 260 pounds. How did you not see him? And then Jones would kill another Jones. He dribbled a grown man in front of thousands of paying patrons. What was the game plan? Throwing it back to Mac Jones just to see Chandler Jones take it into the end zone for the score on the list of everything that could possibly go wrong to end the game. This was in nobody's bingo book. God himself never saw this coming. Finish him, fatality. Snake, are you okay? Snake? Snake? Jacoby Myers gotta be the stupidest motherfucker walking God's green earth with a helmet and shoulder pad. Cut him figuratively, literally, and physically. If he tries to get into the locker room, fuck it. Dude, his ass. Two plays later, third and four. Mahomes takes the snap, 15 seconds on the clock. He's going to use his legs, running on one ankle. Almighty push. Foul, foul. Mahomes picks up the first down, but he's thrusted out of bounds. That's a personal foul. 15-yard penalty. The Chiefs are in field goal range. Uh-oh, retard alert. Retard alert. Woo, woo, clitoris alert, clitoris alert. Woo, woo, clitoris alert, clitoris alert. Woo, woo, woo. Joseph Asai. What the hell are you doing, stupid? Mahomes is scrambling to pick up the first down. Clearly gets beyond a marker. And you push him when he's clearly out of bounds. What the hell was going through your head? You can't possibly say you didn't know that he picked up the first down or you didn't know he was out of bounds. You're looking straight at him. The first down marker is within your field of vision. There's no possible way you didn't see it. Almighty push. Who 
in their right mind makes this kind of mistake? Granted, Mans is 22 years old. It's his first year playing because last year he was hurt. But you played football your entire life to make it into the NFL. You know right from wrong. And last I checked, discipline is on the marquee. You're supposed to know your alignment, assignment, responsibility. But your dumb ass just gave the Chiefs field goal range on their last offensive play. To make matters worse, you can argue he was the best player on their defense today, but in classic Cincinnati fashion, it takes one to cost them the game. This wasn't even incidental contact. He extended his hands forward. Look at the lunge. The immaculate stupidity would set up the Chiefs at the 28-yard line and Harrison Butker from 45 yards out with the opportunity to send the Chiefs to Super Bowl 57, boots it through the uprights, and it's good. They lead by three with three seconds left to play. Joseph Assay, put your motherfucking head back down, you goddamn bum. And just like the San Francisco 49ers, the Bengals' undisciplined football is what's going to cost them this game. Hey, I got some wise words for that Cincinnati mayor. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni. They're going to take their bum ass back to Cincinnati. But it's your fault. That's right. Cry. Is the entire game his fault? Absolutely not. But did he put Kansas City in the position to win the game? Absolutely did. This is incredibly similar to the Marcus Williams situation. There's no denying that mistakes happen in football, but it's when those mistakes happen that matters most in these situations. Again, let me reiterate, the guy's a very good football player, but anybody with a brain who's ever played the game, watched the game, coached the game, understood the game, you don't touch somebody who's out of bounds. It's undisciplined football that got the Bengals in this situation because for all intents and purposes, they probably would have been able to force overtime and at least had an opportunity to see if they could have won the AFC Championship for the second consecutive year had it not been for this absolute blunder of a play. We could talk about short buses. We could talk about lacking chromosomes. We could talk about being special needs. Every single one of these individuals are straight up retarded. Let me tell you something right now. The Cowboys, for them running this play with your season on the line, what is going through your mind? You need to have your noggin given a flogging. 58 on the Cincinnati Bengals. It's a chance to go back to the Super Bowl and you decide to push Patrick Mahomes out of boots. Are you stupid? Then Nathaniel Hackett, Russell Wilson as a collective. You don't know how to use your timeouts? Are you guys dumb? I don't even want to get into the remainder of of the clips one way or another. Personally, I believe every single one of them deserve the clitoris alert. Let it be known in the comment section who you guys believe it takes precedence over the competition and stands alone as the clitoris alert champion for 2022. But as far as I'm concerned, every single one of the players involved in each of those plays, including DJ Moore, needs to be executed on the field like I apologize for my outburst, but moving on, let's talk about the what happened to his hands dropped catch 
of the year. Now, there's a few nominees for this award, and once more, I'm gonna leave it up to audience perception for who you guys believe has the worst drop of the year. Personally, in my opinion, there were no super substantial drops that thus resulted in somebody needing to be cut expeditiously. However, there were quite terrible drops throughout the season, and I was able to compile a few of what I believe to be the absolute worst. And truly, I believe Aaron packed his bag months in advance to ship out of Green Bay because this rookie decided to drop a goddamn pass on the opening week of the season. Think fast. A.A. Ron Rogers going deep. Got him in. I dropped it. Is a no good, lousy son of a hey, bitch. Hey, That's he, exactly what he is. But he's a no good bastard for what he did and he ought to burn in hell for it. You done messed up, A.A. Ron. I don't think I've seen Aaron Rodgers smile at Matt LaFleur all season long. Ever since Devontae Adams left, this man been upset. Should have never signed that deal, stupid. You done messed up, A.A. Ron. Seattle got Brock Purdy out here looking like Fran Tarkenton mixed with Joe Montana, making all kinds of plays. I dropped it. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. San Francisco is absolutely clapping the Seattle Seahawks. So Brandon Hanks drop shouldn't necessarily be on the board, but let's keep it a buck. If you go back and you watch that play, this could have been the greatest play of Brock Purdy's career. This man was out there looking, like I said, Fran Tarkenton and Joe Montana polarization fused together as one in 2022. And Hank had too much vanilla secretion on his doggone gloves and dropped what should have been the play of the playoffs. So as far as I'm concerned, he stays on the list. Stupid idiots. Welcome back to Hold My Nugget Studios once again, live from Arrowhead and who the hell uses M&T Bank Stadium for your 2000... I dropped it. Are you serious? Not only you interrupt my intro, your dumbass can't catch a football. Mans couldn't catch a cold in Antarctica, couldn't grab a vagina if he was a rogue gynecologist. I've seen mannequins with better hands than you. Your hands are just for decoration, you goddamn bum. What happened to his hands? Cooper Rush looking to go deep down the field. Got CD Lamb. I dropped it. He had a fuck. How? Hold on, bro. How? What happened to his hands? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hold My Nuggets to eh? Brady going deep for Evans. Well, shit. I dropped it. What are you doing? Mike Evans is the only receiver in NFL history to start every season of his career with a thousand yards. And man's dropped a blatant 75 yard touchdown to start this game. If you was going to be juggling balls on Sundays, you could have went to Michael Sam's house. I bet he couldn't catch a sex tape if he was going through an OnlyFans account. What happened to his hands? But if you were to ask me personally, I believe the worst drop of the entire season comes from Mike Evans because Tom Brady played his last season in the NFL. And one of the lasting memories that I have of his final season is Mike Evans dropping the football as Tom Brady dropped back, looked towards the end zone for a Another record-breaking touchdown because let's just keep it a buck. Since he has all the records, every single score, every single yard is considered record-breaking. But here it was, Mike Evans, as he heard the, eh, the, the goddamn deployment of the football from Tom Brady's right arm, he had it go right through his goddamn hand. So as far as I'm concerned, Mike Evans has the worst drop of 2023 in tribute to Tom Brady. And speaking of Tom Brady, I'm not going to get long-winded giving this man his farewell because he's terrible. Terrorize not only my Pittsburgh Steelers, but 30 additional teams in the NFL for countless decades. You understand what I'm saying? For 20 plus years, this man has terrorized us. So I'm not going to sit over here and, and, and defame this man verbally, but I will take a moment to acknowledge one of the funniest follies I've ever seen in my entire life. And it did come from this man's farewell tour. What's happening in Germany? Why is Tom Brady lined up at receiver? Watch out for that banana. Uh, 
pass intercepted by Seattle. Whenever Brady lines up at receiver, nothing good ever happens. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Look at him trip the Seahawks. Look at this man. This man is 76 years old. They tried to line him up to catch passes. I think if he actually had the reception there, that would have made him the oldest person to ever catch a football. The current record is Jerry Rice at 42 years old in 2004. Clearly, Brady just wants the entire record book to himself. How you like that, old man? Slipping on bananas. Not only do you drop passes when you go out to receive it, you just so happen can't keep your foot in. You done slipped on the field like you slipped out your marriage. I shouldn't have said that. One way or another, Tom Brady, from me to you, from us to you, Godspeed in your retirement. I would hope that we don't have, you know, any individuals who just so happen to try to sleep with your um, women that you happen to frequent because you have a former teammate who decided he wanted to try to, you know, slip in between the cheeks of your ex-wife. But we shall not speak about the clown that is Antonio Brown. Enough from the clown. Hey! Hey! Enough from the clown. Now let's shift gears to one of the funnier moments of the 2022 NFL season where we saw a butt punt? few plays later, Miami to punt. Uh, My yes! What the hell's going on in Miami? This man just punted the football into his teammates' butt cheeks. Why would you back into the punter? What was going through your mind? I want you to punt that big man truck right in this little garage. Yeah, what the fuck? I don't think we've ever seen a football player twerk into the punter. Would you categorize this as a punt block by way of gluteal cleft? Man stepped on the field and decided to get his cheeks clapped by a football with less than two minutes left to play. And for the Dolphins, in a game that they're trying to put away, they'd learn that you can't shoot bullets with your gun on safety. And this nincompoop decides to possibly try to get a sponsorship because of his butt punt. You know what I want. Gonna give me what I want. I've never seen a butt pump before. I've never seen a butt pump before. He's gonna go into the film room, he's gonna correct it, you know, and next time he's gonna catch it with his butt cheeks because he got strong butt cheeks. What? Let me tell you something right now. Next week, if the Dolphins run a trick play and this man catches the football in betwixt his butt cheeks and runs for a touchdown, I will never watch football again. Mm. Yes. Nasty bitch. We trying to finish a football game here, and now the football smells like fecal matter. What the fuck is that smell? Football certainly looks different than the football I was watching when I was growing up. Man's tried to back up his dump truck and park that big-ass football right in his little garage. It got disgusting, brother. Just like all kinds of fights and conflict around the league. There was constant different times in which referees and different sort of players had to separate two teams or two individual players because tempers were flaring. But I believe these were the two biggest fights of the NFL season. Olave got baptized. Couple plays later, Dalton steps up in the pocket, looking right. He's got Smith, makes a man miss, carries it for a first down, and trucks a man to boot. Fuck out of here. Ah! Woo Heavens to Betsy, we've got a fracas, a kerfuffle, a skirmish, a brouhaha between the Saints and the Cardinals on the sideline. Smith thought he caught a body, then he got flipped. He fed Hamilton a shoulder pad for dinner, but didn't know he was taking a ride on the Wonder Wheel. Dude, what the fuck? Evidently, Smith does not like the amusement park. He's apoplectic. He's having a conniption. But I'm not even going to lie to you. I think this is actually incidental contact because there's no way Hamilton could have known Smith was on top of him. Take a look at Hamilton's face. He's spinning backward. Now his head is facing downward as Smith is stepping over him. There's no way for him to have seen his opposition on top of him. Smith, unbeknownst to him, does not know Hamilton had no clue what happened. Hence why Hamilton didn't engage initially. And then the skirmish begins. But look at Jameis Winston with a left hand. You shall not pass. I'm mad, man. Oh, you oh, pass. Oh, Stacking back. Stone Cold Steve Austin is striking anything that might be.
What's going on in New Orleans? There was a disagreement verbally between Lattimore and Brady, and suddenly we had a fracas, a skirmish, a kerfuffle, a brouhaha between both NFC South teams. Mike Evans is apoplectic. He's having a conniption. We had a couple ejections. Nobody's still able to score. What is it about these two teams every time they play? Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore got a fight. I know they got bad blood, but my God, put it aside. Fight each other after the game, maybe in the parking lot, maybe on a video game. Why keep getting yourselves ejected? What's wrong with y'all? This is the third time in five years that Lattimore and Mike Evans both been ejected for fighting. We've seen Le'Veon Bell and Adrian Peterson step into the ring and fight each other. We've seen Frank Gore step into the ring and fight somebody else. Why not this offseason? Mike Evans, Marshawn Lattimore, main event, New Orleans, Tampa Bay, MSG does not matter. Make it happen, Roger. Both these teams got more beef than Mandingo Warriors on a set of a Brazzers film. More animosity than a Japanese exchange student learning American history about World War II. This all started because Tom Brady went to go ask the referee for some advice regarding Giselle's complaining at home. Marshawn Lattimore said, go home and fuck your wife. Football's over. Leonard Fournette got involved. On a weekend where his high school retired his jersey, he wasn't going to take any kinds of disrespect respect and Mike Evans saw this as a clear opportunity to attack Marshawn Lattimore. Perhaps we need to get it trending on Twitter. Mike Evans versus Marshawn Lattimore in a phone booth. I'm trying to figure out how the hell Bruce Arians made it down to the field. Ain't he supposed to be upstairs? It was a shoving match on Marshawn Lattimore. And look at Evans. Evans took man's down with the almighty push. Referee trying to break up the tensions flaring, but he ain't doing shit. He's staying as far away as he can. Somebody get me that black referee's name. Somebody send in his pink slip. He did absolutely nothing to defuse the situation. Before being sent to their respected locker rooms, Lattimore decided to take a drink. Mike Evans is going for a hike. Son turned into Dr. Newsom and tried to destroy the camera. How you gonna try to sign autographs when you got ejected? If you don't get your dumb ass to the back and look at those bloodthirsty fans. They want the gloves of the man with the sweat and blood of Marshawn Lattimore. But look at the Saints fan in the white polo on the right of the screen. I think he's trying to punch Mike Evans. Why I I guess he just wanted a point, but somebody tried to hit him with a towel. One way or another, two of the stars of this game are gone. Now, I'd like to sit here and say I don't know what the beef is between Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore. It's all in the name of good competition, but these two gentlemen been going back and forth for years now. I think it's time to let bygones be bygones. I'm not saying you can't compete, but it seems as if they step into the game already with nefarious intent, ready to goddamn get thrown out the game every time you see 13 and 23 opposite of each other. I love watching the two gentlemen compete, but my God, this upcoming year, could we not get thrown out of a game? Could we not have some sort of face-off that could possibly move past the point of civil discourse and then now you got ejections? I would like to see both teams compete at full strength. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. It's getting ridiculous out there. The next time I see Marshawn Lattimore and Mike Evans going off at the mouth, getting face to face, face mask to face mask, helmet to helmet, I'm gonna need to summon somebody to put these two motherfuckers in timeout. I've had it. Everyone's getting a timeout. Now, moving on to one of my favorite awards, a staple in the Chiseled Adonis community, and that is the 2022 Dreadlocks M. V. And this year was an incredibly close race because we've had two multiple time previous winners compete for the top spot. I'm talking, oh, Henry King, Derek Henry and Devante Sweet. Feet Adams, the two of them, I believe, had the two best dreadlocked season. Now, don't get me wrong. There were countless other individuals who could possibly come for the crown, but I believe these two individuals had the two best dreadlocked seasons this past year. And although I would love for the two of them to share 
the title for the Dreadlocks MVP. It's only right that you gotta choose one. And the captain, the leader of the Dreadlocks Nation has reclaimed his prize atop the Dreadlocks players in the NFL because once again, for the third time, King O. Henry is the Dreadlocks MVP. Time to release the Kraken. Derrick Henry gets the carry. Fuck you. Snake, are you okay? Snake? Snake? Good God. Good God. That's it, he's dead. Somebody stop the damn many times is Derrick Henry going to murk a cornerback who just so happens to have dreadlocks? This is getting ridiculous. Man cancels out everybody else's powers. For the second time, there's a dead body in Jenkins' house. Touchdown into hell! Touchdown into hell! You freak! You monster! Touchdown the son of a bitch! All the way to hell! Touchdown! Touchdown! enough, I was highly considering giving the Dreadlock Player of the Year to Devontae Adams, but there was only one hiccup that he had this entire season, and unfortunately, it really set him back. Almighty push. Heavens to Betsy, in an act of frustration, Devontae Adams done shoved what looks like a sound guy or a camera guy, but he's definitely getting fined. Despite the fact that it's the green jacket individual's job to make sure people like this doesn't get in the way of the players, but nevertheless, you ain't supposed to be pushing people after, during, or before the game at all. You just got yourself a lawsuit because you're upset. And to make matters worse, they caught you in eight K, the best cameras in the world, just seen you shove a man for no damn reason. So not only are you one in four, you're probably going to get suspended, find out the wazoo, and then you're going to get sued because this man filed a police report. Despite the fact that he really took no damage, it's the principle of being shoved. He's now cashed in on a bag because your dumbass unleashed your dreadlock powers at moments you didn't need to. Almighty push. This was a mistake. Now back to the football. We'll move on to the 2022 hurdle of the year. Who transmogrified a defender into the Goomba? And it appears that for a second consecutive year, we've got a repeat winner. And he too just so happens to don dreadlocks. But it's not King Derek. Oh, Henry. It's Triangle Button Poppy. Najee Hurdle Harris himself for the second consecutive year, putting his gluteal cleft on the top of somebody's helmet top. Following a Las Vegas punt, Kenny interception looking towards his right. He's got triangle poppy. Turns a Raider into a Goomba, takes it inside Las Vegas territory. In his past life, Manns must have been a part of the Air Force, because why does he always want to leave his glute air on somebody's helmet, steadily making them smell his nutsack? Plus, he hurdled homie clean. The defender didn't lay a single finger on this man's body. Congratulations! This wasn't a very difficult decision, but granted, I am a Pittsburgh Steeler fan. Let me talk to Najee Harris real quick. Sir, could you relax? I understand your athleticism is quite superior, but every single time you just so happen to see a defender, do you have to press the triangle button? Do you gotta press the Y button? Do you have to try to hurdle somebody? It's getting ridiculous. Somebody's gonna hit you airborne and all of a sudden your ankle is gonna freaking detach itself. People gonna think you a damn Ken doll out here, wondering why your limbs is coming off. You an action figure, sir? What the hell's the matter with you? Telegraph goddamn hurdles. It works. Don't tell me, don't get me wrong. It's magnificent to see you go out there and showcase your peak athleticism, but as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, sir, can you relax? Can you please relax? Cut down the hurdles by 28%, please. We do not care. And speaking of absolute ridiculousness, I feel like now is the perfect time to bring up the 2022 Genjutsu of the year. And it's going to be a very unconventional one because a lot of you might think uh, it could be a play to where we thought it was something, but it was something else. I think the ultimate Genjutsu is turning the professional gridiron, the professional football field into a child's playground. Fuck! Tell me I did not 
just see that. A little bit of trickery from Andy Reid's offense. Patrick Krum to Frog Mahomes throws it to Cardavius Tony. He runs into the end zone for the score. And the Kansas City Chiefs lead by three possessions on the weirdest game. There was laundry on a field. The old lineman did something wrong, but I have never seen such child's play on the football field. You can't get me to stand on the other end watching these motherfuckers act a fool in front of me. There would have been some equipment flying everywhere. I'm getting thrown out of the game. Somebody's getting a helmet to their knee. On the very next play, following the penalty, Jets sweep to Tony, and he finds the end zone anyway. Don't get me wrong. The play did not count. They ended up scoring on the very next play. But do you recognize the level of disrespect that the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, and company displayed on the football field on prime time television? You gonna go out there and do ring around the rosy as grown adults, fathers, were on the field on both offense and defense, special teams looking over, and you out there going on a loop, ring around the rosy before going and running a goddamn play? Are you kidding me? There's no way if I was on defense, somebody's kneecaps is not getting exploded. There's no way I'm not intentionally going and trying to hurt somebody because they better men than me. I understand there is a brotherhood. There is a code amongst all players, but you can't just come out here and blatantly disrespect me like this before the doggone snap of the play. They lucky there was a penalty that was on the offense because I'm telling you something right now. If this just so happened to stand, there is no way the Kansas City players, all 53 suited up players would have made it home that evening. Somebody is going to the afterlife because you're not going to disrespect me in front of my family like this. Plays later for Mahomes. He's going to avoid the rush from Joey Bosa. Rolling towards his right, extending the play. He's got Travis Kelsey. Makes two men miss. Come here. Derwin Arn Anderson, spine buster James, taking down Travis Kelsey, forcing a fumble that goes into the end zone. It's Chargers football. He does have the eye of the tiger. Are you sure about that? How about new? Dan Jetson! Despite the spectacular spine buster, Travis Kelsey would not fumble because he's down by contact. The football was ricocheted out of his hands after hitting the ground. But nevertheless, even though it wasn't a turnover, he still gave that boy the business. I broke my back. Your my back is broken. Spinal. When James, man. Ooh. A lot of safeties are out here throwing their weight around, but he's uh, he's one of the bigger guys that can actually lay the, lay the wood, man. A few moments later. What's going to happen here? Undertaker fighting back. He's fighting back. They're running about us, folks. And I don't like it a damn bit. And suddenly there was a back. I don't know who this clone chiseled Adonis was, but I cannot confirm nor deny said sentiments of the individual who said they would be swinging on a people and sending them to the ICUs. That 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 wasn't me. That wasn't me at all. Sorry. Now this is an award that is near and dear to my heart. So I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the blowjob 
of the year because in past years it has constantly been the Atlanta Falcons. For whatever reason, it always tends to be the team that resides in Georgia. In the fourth quarter, if they have a lead, they're gonna choke. If they have a lead in the second half, they're gonna choke. But their franchise leader in passing, Matt Ryan, left Atlanta for the very first time, moved over to Indianapolis, but it appears you can take the man out of Atlanta, but you can't take the Atlanta out of the man because Matt Ryan spearheaded the greatest choke job in NFL regular season history. Not only does he have the greatest choke job in NFL postseason history in Super Bowl 51, he now has the greatest choke job in both the postseason history and the regular season history, where this man spearheaded a 33-point lead with his Indianapolis Colts leading over the Minnesota Vikings at halftime and they lost. Let's turn back the clock and rewind if you will and relive the greatest regular season choke job spearheaded by yours truly Mr. Matt Ryan. Fuck! Minnesota's offense can't do nothing. I blocked it. Heavens to Betsy, looks like Ryan Wright's punt was wrong. It's blocked right into the hands of the Indianapolis Colts, returned into the end zone, double digit lead. Now Gordon Ramsay that Dalvin's not cooking correctly. What is he making, Apple? Turnovers, butterfingers, fumble on the play, it's scooped up by Indianapolis. But look how Adam Thielen absolutely froze this man. He can no longer advance once the white man got his hands on him. You don't find that suspicious? Indianapolis in the period colored zone. Matt Ryan looking towards his right, got his man touchdown. In the lead 17-0. Calvin still cooking. This time it's Pecan. Turnovers on downs because he failed to pick up the first down. Participating in the Frank Estanza challenge, cuz. Hmm, I stopped short. The That's not what he wanted to cook. Colts would add to the foot fetish because McLaughlin would go kick a field goal of his own. Kick is showing the power of their toes. Listen, I'm a toe expert. A little bit of trickery. The last punt was blocked. How about we throw it? Another turnover on downs leads to Colts points. They lead 23 to 0. Think fast. Kirk family member looking over the middle. He's got a man. Yoink. But he plays for the other team. Pass intercepted and returned into the end zone as they headed to McDonald's. Can I get a McPick six? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. The Vikings are getting fucked in this bitch. They lose in 30 0. So Give me this motherfucker. Get your ass up out of here! Jeffrey Dahmer necrophilia challenge continues because the Vikings may be dead, but somehow they're still getting fucked 33 times! Three plays later, Kirk family member Cousins would find KJ Ozzy Osbourne in the end zone for the score, and Minnesota's on the board! It's not like they only losing by 26! Oh my god, who the hell cares? two yard field goal for Indianapolis it's booted through the uprights and it's good the lead is back up to 29 just tell the Vikings fans to go home there's no way that they're coming back the Colts is up by 29 and Matt Ryan's the quarterback wait Matt Ryan I man, oh, I man, think fast is that baloney maybe pastrami perhaps it's prosciutto but it's CJ Ham who finds his way into the end zone for the score Minnesota cuts their deficit down to three scores and all you had to do was run it into the end zone, CJ. Why you look concerned, Matt? There's nothing to be worried about. It's Colts possession still leading by 22. Ryan airs it out but throws it to absolutely nobody. Nothing to worry about entering the fourth quarter up by three scores. What could possibly go wrong? Minnesota Tinky Winkies in striking distance. Third and two for Kirk family member looking towards his left. He's got Justin Jefferson who just put Stephon Gilmore in a blender. Touchdown, Minnesota. They cut the deficit down to two scores. Don't call it a comeback. Check the scoreboard, pussy. You still losing. It's happening. It's happening. Oh, yeah, God, no. Third and five for the Colts. They're still throwing the football. Michael Arm Pittman's got nowhere to go. He'd be stopped for a loss. They'd be forced to punt. Next Vikings possession. Kirk family member Cousins looking to go for it all, trying to make this game close. Down the field, got a man. Wahoo. But he plays for the other team. Pass intercepted by the Colts. They're what we thought they were.
Get your ass up out of here. You entered the second half up by five scores. Why have you thrown the ball the same amount of times as you ran it? Brothers and sisters, I'm having a hard time understanding. Following the punt, great field positioning for the Vikings. Kirk family member over the middle, got Adam Thielen inside the 35. Think fast, very next play, KJ Ozzy Osbourne's got the football, another Viking first down. Third and goal, time to get educated, get connected for free with the white people connection. Get connected for free, Kirk family member Adam Thielen, TD, one score game. I say, I say. Go! You were up 33-0. How'd they cut it to a one-score game? There's never been a 33-point comeback in NFL regular season history. The fuck you doing out here? Pressure on the Colts. Hand off, and they got me. Butterfinger scooped up by the Vikings. It's returning to the end zone. Touchdown. 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 The Vikings cut their deficit down to the referees absolutely screwed Minnesota and whistled this play dead by forward progress rather than calling the obvious fumble when the ball was loose before Maines even touched the ground. The play would go under review. Minnesota would indeed get the football, but the scoop and score would be erased because they'd spot the football at the spot of the recovery. Fuck you, bitch! Minnesota now has the football under three minutes left to play. Fourth and 15. Run, Kirk! Ah! He's tripped up from behind. Turn over on downs. You get the football back. A couple first downs. This game is over. There is no blowjob, coach. Let's end it. Very first play. Here come the Colts following the turnover on downs. They're going to pick up a first down and take it inside Minnesota territory. Three plays later. Third and seven. Run it again. They pick up six. They're going to set up fourth and one from the 34-yard line. You did it, coach. You got in field goal range. You made a 52-yard field goal earlier in this half. All you got to do is put it through the uprights, make it good, and you'll have a two-possession lead with under three minutes left to play. A first down ends the game, but you're in field goal range. Take the safe bet. Just make the field goal, stupid. Oh, my God, they went for it. But it appears that Matt Ryan's second effort gets him across the line for the first down. The Colts are going to win. I forgot to tell you. I lied! What the hell? He's marked short. The same way the refs screwed the Vikings, they come right back and screw the Colts. They blew it dead before the second effort to get across the first down marker. And the Colts turned the football over on downs when they could have just kicked a field goal and gone up two possessions. Jeff Saturday throwing the challenge flag, but they already reviewed it. They go back once more, view the play, and fuck the Colts again. No first down for you. Go! Why? Why would you not kick the field goal when you made it from that very distance earlier on in the game? I understand not wanting to give the football back to the other team with an opportunity to go down the field and score a first down into the game right there. But you've done nothing in the second half. Take the safe bet and kick the fucking field goal, you idiot. Vikings get the football back, first and 10 from their own 35. Toss over to Dalvin Cook. He's weaving his way through the Colts defense. Off to the races, opens up his Bible to Heronicles 13, verse 7. Can't stop, won't stop. The Lord our God has dreadlocked 64 yards into the end zone to cut the deficit down to two. The Colts are choking. They're still choking! They desperately need a stop. Kirk family member doesn't give a hoot. Looking over the middle, got his man in the end zone for the score. Tie game, 36 apiece. It's a barbecue, and the Colts are on the grill. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. He got cooked. I know I'm a shit. My chain hang down to it my heart. tie the game after you led 33 to 0 in the same half is there no gag reflex on the indianapolis sideline does nobody recognize the blow job they're putting together how does the colts blow a 33 0 lead What's going on out here? But there's a little under two minutes left to play. Matt Ryan's going to get the opportunity to take a step onto the field. He's got the second most comebacks in NFL since he entered the league. Third and five. Pittman can't pick up the first down. He's participating in the Frankenstein to challenge, guys.
Mm, I stopped short. You're so flexing. I'm so antsy. Kirk family member takes the field with six game winning drives this season looking to get a seventh. Once more he tried to use his legs but he'd fail to pick up the first down because he's participating in the Frank Costanza challenge. Mm, I stopped short. Let's get the football but they say let's go to overtime. How the hell you get outscored in the second half 36 to 3 and you was up 33 to 0? Matt Ryan! How many leads will you be at the helm of blowjobs? Colts get the football, but they say let's go to overtime. How the hell you get outscored in the second half? 36 to 3, and you was up 33 to 0. Matt Ryan! How many leads will you be at the helm of blowjobs? To overtime we go. Here comes Kirk family member Cousins. Second and four for the Vikings. Looking towards his right. He's got Ozzy Osbourne. Takes the football to the 50. But following a couple of penalties. Third and 24. They're back on their side of the field. They'd fail to pick up the first down. And they're too far to trust the field goal. They'd be forced to punt. Matt Ryan's headed to the field. He has an opportunity to make up for this shitty half. In the history of the NFL, there's only been one L, one tie of a team leading by 30 plus. Will the Colts be the second? Ryan looking towards his right. He's got Michael Arm Pittman extends for the first down. But three plays later, the offensive line would take a playoff. Ryan's going to be hit the pass sales incomplete. They're going to be forced to punt. Kirk family member is headed back to the field. You had the football in your hands. You could have tried to do something. Now you got to watch from the sideline again second and four Kirk family member takes the snap looking towards his right back towards his left he's got Osborne he takes it to the 35 carries it to the 39 very next play under a minute left to play the Vikings don't want to tie family member over the middle he's got feeling first down and they're in field goal range Two plays later, the Vikings want to be comfortable. Kirk family member looking towards his right. Justin Jefferson takes it across the 30, but they're out of timeouts. The Colts are trying to get Justin Jefferson into missionary position. They refuse to let him off the ground. The Vikings got to rush to the line and spike it before they're out of time. But there's laundry on the field. Delay of game called on the defense. Look at this man staying on Justin Jefferson against his will. No means no, bitch. You've got to go. Go! Go! In the very game where you were performing a blowjob, you now try to have your defensive players take another man's booty? What kind of performance is this? I came looking for man's butt. Excuse me? I like you, and I want you. Now we can do this the easy way, or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. Okay, I, I see you choosing the hard way. Hey, oh, you ruin that bite, no, Chris. I'm, no, a, please. I'm a warrior. Ah! Help! 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 Police! What kind of booty warrior defense is that? Greg Joseph from 40 yards out to pull off the greatest comeback in regular season history through the uprights. And it's good. The Vikings win. The Vikings win. They come from 33 down and hand Jeff Saturday an L on a Saturday. Look at the fans who decided loyalty was better than disappointment. If you left at halftime, I hope your car broke down on the way home. As Minnesota clinches the NFC North and pulls off the greatest comeback in regular season history. But once again, a familiar face on the side of history. Matt Ryan! Your career will forever be known as the captain of choking. You've once again performed the blowjob of a lifetime. The people always ask, why is your neck so long? That's because... Who are you? Just call me Deep Throat. I may be terrible at this, and after eight games, I'll say, God bless you. I am no good. Yeah! Fire! What? Jeff Saturday! You don't
don't need to wait until the end of the season to get your job taken from you. You should be in front of Walmart handing out pamphlets for the Lord rather than standing on sidelines for football games. Blowing a 33-point lead had never been done in NFL history. And, of course, the man who's the most unqualified coach in history is the first to do it. This blow job today was so spectacular. Brazzers is contacting Jim Irsay for your resume. And Matt Ryan, there's no way you're part of the greatest Super Bowl choke job in NFL history. And now the greatest regular season game choke job in NFL history. Coincidence? Me thinks not. I don't want to see either of you on a sideline for the remainder of your days unless you're visiting your former teams as a fan because you two used to be great in your day but at this point you both absolutely suck coach jeff saturday and matt ryan put your motherfucking heads back down you goddamn bums I have got to get my dick sucked. But here's what's hilarious, because just when you thought Matt Ryan's choke job, the Indianapolis Colts choke job, Jeff Saturday's choke job would be the worst of the year, we went to the postseason. And the Los Angeles Chargers, led by Brandon Dumbass Staley himself, went up 27 to 0 over Sunshine, Trevor Lawrence, and his Jacksonville Jaguars. And somehow, despite leading by four scores, they did not come out the victor. I wonder what transpired there. Let's turn back the clock. Thanos, grab the time stone. And let's relive one of the greatest postseason choke jobs of all time and now go chargers go do the chargers give a shit <laughs> yoink not at all because the pass is ricocheted and intercepted by the los angeles android chargers on the second play of the game oh shit Jags fans didn't even get a chance to dip a toe in that nasty ass pool before trevor lawrence turned the football over but hey t-law nothing to worry about it's only one pick second play of the game no way you throw another interception right and now go chargers go with los angeles having the football here comes justin herbert from family guy second in the nfl in passing already having the football in the period colored zone second and five tossed to that mulatto austin eckler bursts his way up the middle into the end zone for the score and you know he's just as black as he is white as he scores the Chargers' first postseason touchdown cuz that's how a white man runs a football that's how a white man plays guitar and seven from the 33 and a half. Why kick a 50-yard field goal when you can cook up apple turnovers? Pass intercepted by Asante Samuel. The Jadges take the football away. Oh, shit. Here we go again. Goddamn, Trevor. First two drives, two interceptions. But, hey, it's still early in the game. It's only 7-0 early in the first quarter. No way you throw another interception, right? That would set up the special team's penis. Dicker the kicker through the uprights, and it's good. The Jadges lead 10-0. Now go. Chargers, go. Maybe things are finally going to go Jacksonville's way. Wahoo. I guess not. Pass picked off for a third time by the Chargers and the second by Asante Samuel Jr. He's just... Trevor, what the hell are you doing, bro? How the hell you throw three interceptions? in the first quarter when you haven't thrown a pick in the first quarter in your entire career. Luckily, it's only one period in the game. No way you throw another interception, right? And now go Chargers, go. The Los Angeles rolling 60 Crips in the Suwoop zone once more. Hand off to that damn Yolato, Austin Eckler, and he's just as white as he is black, finds the end zone for the second time tonight, cause that's how a white man runs a football. <laughs> That's how the white man plays guitar. Dags getting cooked, and these motherfuckers only came for the pool. I'm surprised nobody's thrown a Chargers fan in the water. What's wrong with the cameraman? Why are they trying to zoom in on this man booty shorts? Hey!
And now go Chargers, go. The Mulatto on the sideline doesn't mean that the Chargers can't score. Herbert looking towards his right. He's got Everett, finds his way into the end zone. Los Angeles leads 24 to zero. And now go Chargers, go. Plays later. Here comes Mr. Sunshine. Trevor Lawrence looking over the middle. <laughs> Picked off for the fourth time and the third by Asante Samuel Jr. He continues to stunt like his daddy. And Trevor Lawrence got as much completions as he has in interception. How many takeaways does Asante Samuel have? One, two, three. Ah, ah, ah. Trevor Lawrence! You throw more picks than a Razor Ramon Scott Hall convention. How the fuck you throw four picks in the first half? How many? Donations. Gifts. If you're going to hand out this much giveaways, you might as well give the Chargers a stimulus check. Four picks. Get your bum ass off the field. And now go Chargers. Go. The Chargers would fail to move the football. They'd be forced to punt for the second time today. Happens to Betsy, the football went off the heezy of a Jacksonville special teams player. It's recovered by the Chargers inside the 10. The giveaways continue. Look out! Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. And now go Chargers, go! Dicker the kicker would connect from 23 yards out and give the Chargers a 27 to zero lead. How many points? 27. Coach, everything is going right for your ball club. You're leading 27 0. There's no way you guys blow this lead, right? I want to go home. I'm going to go home. I ain't going to lie, I'm getting cooked. And now, no charges, no. And with under 30 seconds left to go in the first half, Sunshine Trevor Lawrence finds his man in the end zone. Evan Ingram holds on to the football, and Jacksonville is finally on the board, but they still losing by 20. So there's absolutely nothing for the Los Angeles to be worried about. There's no way you guys blow a 27-0 lead, right? Jacksonville's the first team to have five turnovers in the first half since they took the football away from Dan Marino in his last game over 20 years ago. Hey, Brandon Staley, I know you're Brandon Staley, and I never trust Brandon Staley, but you guys were up 27-0. There's no way you guys are going to blow this lead, so I'm confident you'll take care of business in the second half. And now, no charges, no. Knowing Doug Peterson, this is four-down territory, but it won't have to get that far, because wide open in the end zone is Marvin Jones, and the Jags have cut their deficit down to 13. Ouch! That's 14 unanswered. What are you doing? No way you guys blow this lead, right? It's only a two-score game. And now go Chargers, go. For the first time in his career, Dicker the Kicker, the special team's penis, puts together his very first field goal from 50 yards. That's dick. And now no Chargers, no. Very next play, Sunshine Trevor Lawrence is going to let it fly, going deep down the field. Zay Jones in his own area code in the end zone. Touchdown. The Jags cut their deficit down to 10. The Chargers are choking, but they're not done. They take out their Uno cards and give the Chargers two. <laughs> Not today! Not today! I guess not. The deficit remains at 10! And now, no charges, no. Setting up the special team's penis, Dicker the kicker, to make it a 13-point lead. Is that a Pidgeotto? He used Whirlwind. It's wide to the left. No good. He's choking. Oh, Lord. Coach is still up by 10. No way you guys blow this lead, right? And now, no charges. No. Blatant false start on the right tackle. The referee doesn't see it. Lawrence got his man in the end zone. Touchdown, Christian Captain Kirk. And the Jags cut the deficit down to one score. No charges. No. The penalty would spot the football at the one or the two-point attempt. Trevor Lawrence keeps it himself and he gives the Chargers two for their mistakes. They only trail by two. And now Trevor Lawrence becomes the second quarterback to throw for four picks and four TDs in a postseason game since Ben Roethlisberger did it in 2020. 30 minutes ago, Jags fans wanted to kill themselves. Now the Chargers fans want to kill themselves. No! What are y'all doing? A little over five minutes left to play. Jay Herbo. Oh no, 
There's no police here to help me. The Chargers can't seem to do anything right. They've lost all of their momentum, and they're completely choking with four minutes left to play. They're going to be forced to punt. Now the stage is set in NFL history. When you lose the turnover differential by three, you have a 93% chance to lose. Can the Jaguars pull off the third largest comeback in postseason history? Here comes Mr. Sunshine. Lawrence on second and 10, looking towards his left, got his man first down, Captain Kirk. Two plays later, 225 on the clock. Lawrence takes the snap all kinds of time, looking towards his right, got his man at midfield. Kirk again. Now inside Charger territory, handoff to Etienne. He's going to pick up four and set up a third and one. Chargers desperately need a stop. Lawrence's pass sails incomplete, fourth and one. A field goal gives them the lead, but knowing Doug Peterson, he's got balls the size of Texas. Hand off to Etienne, he's got outside, carries it inside the 20-yard line. The Jaguars have it at the 15. Go! And now the stage is set for Riley Patterson. Opportunity to send the Jacksonville Jaguars to the divisional round on an insane, improbable comeback. Staley tries to ice the kick and look at the referee try to stop the practice kick. This man nearly threw the punter off the field. You better not choke. 36 yard field goal for the win. The snap, hold, Patterson's kick through the uprights and it's good. The Jacksonville Jaguars come back from 27 down. Oh, Overcome five first half turnovers. Outscore the Chargers 31 to three and complete the third largest comeback in postseason history. In a season where nobody gave them a shot, Trevor Lawrence is headed to Waffle House with his very first playoff victory. Patterson gives them the game winning field goal and with a heavy heart, the Jaguars did it for Uchi and they're moving on to the divisional round of the play. Playoffs. But for the charges. And now no charges, no. 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 You were an absolute scrub. We already knew your decision making was nothing but absolute garbage. And on the national stage, in your debut as a head coach in the playoffs, you choke away a 27 to zero lead. You had five turnovers in the first half and you mustered up just three points in the second. You could barely choke a game away like this in Madden and you do it on the national stage, but nobody's surprised because you were Brandon Staley. Your parents didn't even believe you would win this game. Don't even board the flight back to Los Angeles. You should be fired, unemployed, castrated, and stoned with severed appendages and scrotums before you leave the stadium. Blew this man to the bottom of the pool, consumed Chipotle and Taco Bell, and fought on him endlessly until January 37th. And that date doesn't exist. So never stop falling on his bum ass. Coach, you're an absolute bum and a disgrace. I can't wait to celebrate when you get fired. Put your motherfucking head back down, you goddamn bum. As the Jacksonville Jaguars tell the Los Angeles judges to take out their Metro car. And get aboard the L.
train. But their ride would be short-lived because they've arrived at Elimination Station and they go somewhere different for their failures of capturing a W after leading 27 to 0. Their failures of taking advantage of Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars special teams turning the football over a combined five times in the first half. Consider your names written down the death note 16 different times, 27 different times because your dream of advancing to the divisional round of the playoffs. Your dreams of heading back to the Super Bowl for the first time since 1994. Your dreams of finally hoisting up the Lombardi Trophy for the first time in franchise history has been absolutely dead. There's only one thing left to do. Gotta write their names in the death note. Delete! Delete, delete, delete. Delete, delete, delete. Delete. Delete, delete, delete. Delete, delete, delete. 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 Deletion. Delete. You will rest in peace. It appears that this year there's a dual blow bang that is transpiring in the 2022 NFL season because both the Indianapolis Colts, Matt Ryan and Jeff Saturday, Jim Ursay's club will join Brandon Staley, Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen and the Los Angeles Android Apple Chargers because the two of them are your 2022 blow job, choke job, Blow Bang Champions of the Year. Come collect your prize. Dicks on How many dicks is that? A lot. I had your dick in my mouth. 37. My Dodgers. Suck 37 dicks. In a row? Moving on, in years past, we've seen countless wild angry, ferocious runs where individuals just so happen to get introduced to some trucks. Winners of five straight, here come the red. They put bullets in Robinson, but he put trucks on the Falcons, takes a man's soul, goes into the end zone, touchdown commanders. They take the lead in the nation's capital. Many men, many, 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 many men. And now, no charges, no. First game back already given out. Trucks! Scordero Patterson runs over a Los Angeles Charger. Goes into the end zone. Touchdown. Falcons regain the lead. God damn. Oh. But once again, 2022 was the year of the stiff arm. And individuals were baptized in the name of the Father. Baptized in the name of the Son. Baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit as countless individuals entered themselves for a chance to be the stiff arm champion of 2022. Now go kill him. Finish him. Die. Ah! Ah! Snake, are you okay? Snake? Snake? Put that nigga ass in the dirt. Send some more, I'm gonna send him the same way. In a box, back to you. Three What's kill, up? three oh. kill. Fourth and one. Broncos country, let's run. Yoink. Willie homosexual tipped it to himself. Get your bitch ass off of me, simp. And he's headed to McDonald's. Can I get a McPick six? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. The Chiefs are killing the Broncos in this. Broncos country, let's ride. Broncos country, let's ride. Broncos country, let's ride. 
listen, you cannot talk to me that way you want. What the fuck it is? God damn it. I don't care. To Munich we go. Hand off to Rashad White. Couple of blockers out in front. He's loose. One on one with Quandre Diggs. I baptize you in the name of the Father. I baptize you in the name of the Son. I baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit. You're nothing but a little boy. Little boy. Send him to the shadow realm. Finish him. Die. Ah! Now, this one's a tough one to choose from because there's a great deal of selection. So I'll leave it up to public, you know, opinion. You let it be known in the comment section who you believe had the best stiff arm of this year. Because I can tell you who I believe had the best fat man play of the year. And it took place in no other place than with the grandest stage. The lights are shining upon you. A rematch, the third time meeting between AFC North opponents as the Cincinnati Bengals took on the Baltimore Ravens. Two plays later. <laughs> But our fingers, Hunley puts it on the ground right into the hands of Hubbard, and the fat man is racing down the field. Mark Andrews shot out of a rocket in pursuit, but he falls down. The fat man goes 98 yards into the end zone for the score, and Cincinnati takes the lead. Hunley thinks he scores. John Harbaugh is beside himself. Well, shit. As Hubbard would record the longest fumble return touchdown in postseason history. Here's what I don't understand. Why would you try to go over top when you're a complete yard away? He was nowhere near the end zone, and it's as if he never anticipated somebody would stay up top in case he decided to jump. Picard's entire responsibility on this play was to push him into the end zone, but Hunley decided he wanted to go airborne. And then on the return, look at Gus Edwards. Mans runs a 4-5-240, and he jogging with the game on the line in the playoffs. Mark Andrews trying to do his best Ben Watson impersonation and chase down Hubbard only to get blocked in the back and the referees ain't even call it. Some may argue the block came from the side from Bailey, but the mere fact that the glove made contact with Andrews' back should have drew the penalty. And take a look at the screen. The head official has a bird eye view of the block. There's no reason the return shouldn't have been called back. Now we move from the Batman play of the year to what I believe to be the 2022 NFL play of the year. Granted, we had countless different crazy catches in the NFL and this particular season, the hold my nuggets, suck my dick catch of the year just so happens to be the play of the year. Now granted, there was only two nominees for the catch of the year, the hold my nuggets, suck my dick catch of the year. So I figured I'd be remiss if I did not include George Pickens catch, but he he will not be the winner, but let's take a look at the glorious catch this man had in his rookie season. Two plays later, Mitch, I'm not a bitch, Trubisky rolling towards his right, going down the field. He's got NFL young boy. <laughs> George Pickens with the catch of the year. He may be a rookie, but he's got veteran hands whispered in the Brown secondary's ears. Hold my nuggets. Suck my dick. That's all well and good, but still, you're number two on this year's list because not only was the hold my nuggets suck my dick catch of the year, the play of the year, it took the soul of the Buffalo Bills. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Jefferson, fourth and 18 with one of the greatest catches you'll ever see in your life. The Vikings desperately trying to pull off a miraculous comeback with under two minutes left to play. Justin Jefferson with the catch of the year. He took the football and the opponent's soul away. Lewis thought he had the game-winning interception, but all those years of right arm masturbation pays off for Justin Jefferson. Rips the football out of his hands. You can't even do this catch in Madden. Lewis's family is embarrassed. They're leaving the game and leaving the country. Jefferson didn't even whisper. He shouted in his ears, hold my nuggets, suck my dick, 
give that brother a vasectomy on the field. You don't get to reproduce. His time of death, 4.01 p.m. Location, Buffalo. Let me tell you something right now. I know some individuals who just so happen to exist in Buffalo. They said that the wings at Buffalo Wild Wings was tasting a little funky for a few weeks after Justin Jefferson dropped that deuce all over their defense with that magnificent catch. All the wings that was being sold in throughout the entire city of Buffalo smelled like Justin Jefferson scrotum. Do you understand that he had pubic hair in the garlic parmesan wings? It didn't matter if you got blue cheese, if you got ranch sauce, one way or another, it smelled, it tasted, it resembled that of Justin Jefferson's scrotum, all right? He sexed y'all out there. You should be ashamed. Granted, he's the best receiver in the league currently, but one way or another, you should be ashamed that he embarrassed you in front of your people like that. You brought shame upon yourself and your family. Let the dogs out! Now let's shift gears to more serious matters because throughout NFL's history, sports history really, there have been countless different fans that have gotten overzealous and decided, I want to make this game about myself. There had been some streakers, there had been infiltrators if you will, and there have been countless individuals who just so happened to take to the field. But early on in this season, there was one gentleman who decided to rush the field and, well, he was met with quite the experience. What the fuck is that? Help! Wait a minute, there's a weirdo on the field clout chasing out in Levi Stadium. Turns out he's trying to showcase a gender reveal. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Come here. Hell of a job, Bobby. Way to take that clout chaser out. You want to step on the field, you're going to get treated like a player. If only Wagner was doing that during the game, maybe they wouldn't be trailing by eight points. But we ain't talking about that. Look how excited Peyton Manning was to see Bobby Wagner lay out this nincompoop. Bring back the days of James Harrison. Somebody run on the field, take him to Suplex City. He got exactly what was coming to him. And as far as I'm concerned, anybody who run onto the field needs to be taken to Suplex City. You think these gladiators out here sweet? Suplex, Spear, and goddamn Kinshasa, that man. I recognize he may try to get a payday and sue him, but one way or another, they need to be dealt with similar to these defenders defenders who got dealt with with the absolute give me your ankles juke of the year overseas we go let's check on the other new york team danny dimes dumps it off to saquad barkley give me your ankles he tells one packer carries it inside the 20 49ers get the football to start the second half brock purdy from pewter city gym already finding george mcgriddle kittle wide open tells quandre Diggs, give me your ankles get away from me scoundrel goes into the end zone for the score seattle's getting fucked at home Look at the strong side linebackers. Ain't nobody do their job. How three of y'all defenders over there and nobody guarding George Kittle? Give me your ankles again, pussy. I got this. He was left so wide open, he actually thought that the referees blew the play dead. Seattle is getting cooked. Hey, George, take his ankles again. Come here. Play action fake. Here comes Mahomes rolling towards his right. Time to turn into Houdini. Spin her. What? He tossed it into the end zone, caught by the Kansas City Hobbit. Touchdown, Chiefs. What the f***? This man evaded a fat man on the sack, proceeded to press circle, hit the spin move, turned Devin White into a horse, had that brother eating grass, flipped it into the end zone for Clyde Edwards Hilaire to catch the touchdown. What kind of video game shit is this? Matter of fact, I don't even think you can do this on Madden. Mans is playing football with cheat codes you can't find. This is why I say it's too easy for Patrick Mahomes. Why? Because it's free real estate. Back to Arizona we go. DJ, spin that shit. Your ankles. Sing about Hollywood. Sing about, sing about Hollywood. Sing about, sing about Hollywood. Sing about, sing about Hollywood. Hollywood.
Minnesota Teletubbies inside the five. Toss over to Dalvin Cook. Give me your ankles, plus eight. Goes into the end zone, activating his dreadlock powers. Tie game in the NFC North battle. Not only did he take Elliott's ankles, he told that brother to take a seat. What you trying to clap your hands for, brother? This one here is close, so of course, I'm going to leave it to the public to decide. Comment section, let it be known. What do you believe was the best juke of the 2022 season? Tell me. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd be remiss if I did not take a portion of this evening to shine a light on what was truly one of the worst football games ever witnessed in human history. I need you to understand that this by far was the worst game of this season. In fact, one can argue this might have been the worst game this side of the millennium. On prime time, the Indianapolis Colts took on the Denver Broncos on Thursday night football in front of the entire country. And let me tell you something right now. It was an absolute snooze fest. The game was so bad it went into overtime and the home crowd was dreading the continuation of watching their team play football. In fact, they left to go home in an overtime game. It's not a situation in which the team was behind so much to where you lost faith, departed, only to find out that your team was able to come back and force overtime. Oh no, they were leaving because they were so consumed by boredom watching the two of these teams play football. So I don't even need to tell the story of the game. For those of you who did not get a chance to see it, I am going to show you the game in its entirety. I did my best to bring life to it. I want you to experience play by play the worst game you probably ever seen. Told you, we're gonna hang out and watch a movie. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hold My Nugget Studios once again, live from Empower Field at Mile High, Denver, Colorado, in South Park, for your 2022 NFL Week 5 Thursday Night Football game. I like commentary, where the Indianapolis Colts go on the road to take on the Denver Broncos in a battle of the mid. Both offenses in the bottom three of the NFL, but there's a little bit of a parallel between Matt Ryan and Russell Wilson, both being franchise quarterbacks, but winning over 100 games for their former franchises. Visited Super Bowls, Matt Ryan being an MVP, Russell Wilson winning a championship, trying to capture the glory that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Los Angeles Rams celebrated the last two seasons. Joining five Five other franchises trading for other teams quarterbacks playing in the house that John Elway built two former teams of the legendary Sheriff Peyton Manning do battle despite the fact that both franchises have never recovered since his departure where he joined Fran Tarkenton as one of two players with 200 touchdowns for their first team and 100 with the other Tom Brady will be joining them before the end of the season but nevertheless after one of the greatest quarterbacks to have ever played the game left town both teams damn near started the same amount of starting quarterbacks and have been absolute garbage. At least in the Colts case, they've been over 500, but it's been a different quarterback every single year. Since Andrew Luck left town, they haven't been the same since. Because in four games, Melvin Flash Gordon got four fumbles. He needs to learn from Tiki Barber. You got to keep the football high and tight like a WNBA player's pussy. Meanwhile, on the other end of the field with the injury to Jonathan Taylor, Philip Lindsay will get the start. Despite the fact that his first two seasons with Denver were over a 1,000 yards, they traded him away in the middle of his third season. So tonight, he gets an opportunity at redemption. Here comes Matt Ryan, who's currently battling with Joe Burrow for the most sacked quarterback in the NFL and currently leading the NFL in turnovers. It's as if he wants all of the struggles. And here we go. First play from scrimmage. I dropped it. Boy, ain't no fucking way, boy. What happened to his hands? First play of the game. I could have never fathomed we'd see a drop. Two plays later, Matt Ryan would dump it off to Neams Hines catch up. He'd be stopped for the loss, fail to pick up the first down, and then he'd leave the game with a concussion. Get well soon, brother. Too many people getting hurt thus far this season. On the other end of the field, it's time to let Russ cook. Here comes 
Mr. Unlimited. Russell Wilson takes the field for his second primetime game this season, leading this god awful offense. Fucking guys, this is fucking team, man. They fucking suck. Third and two. Wilson takes the snap, looking towards his right. He's got the pride of Haiti, Jerry Judy, inside Indy territory. Two plays following a flash Gordon first down. I saw Future was at the first down marker talking to Sierra. Russell Wilson's on his way. Picks up the first down to the 15. Bitch, ain't no way. Ain't no fucking way. Since their red zone offense is god awful, Brandon McManus would settle for a 33 yard field goal, put it through the uprights, and the Broncos are in front. Ensuing drive, the Colts already at midfield. Here comes Matt Ryan. Holy shit! Fuck! The Colts O line must have bet on Atlanta in Super Bowl 51 because I don't understand how Matt Ryan's getting lit up every single play. They're gonna be forced to punt. Fuck! Following drive, let Russ cook. Looking towards his left. I dropped it. What happened to his hands? It appears that the first quarter is a competition of no hands and absolutely no protection. Everybody get on the floor. Think fast, Matt Ryan's throwing the football to his Super Bowl 51 ring. Wait a minute. I don't have one. Fuck! Following another three and out play action fake, it's time for Russell Wilson to unleash the best deep ball in the NFL. <laughs> Yeah, well, not anymore, you're not. You know what's crazy? He threw the ball so far, he could have underthrown Jerry Judy and found a completion. And just like the last drive, this drive participating in the Frank Costanza challenge, because when they needed to pick up a first down... Mm, I stopped short. I said I wanted to give you a blowjob, and you said we're going to be late for the game. There's no offense happening. I could have been sucking your dick right now. I've made a huge mistake. Oh! Do something. Hot, hot. Slithering. Oh, watch, like watch, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Bradley Chubb takes him down for his fourth sack on the year. It's growing! It's growing! <laughs> the whole first quarter for the Colts was a fourth down, bruh. At least they're in the top ten for passing yards per game. I mean, it's probably because they're always losing, but we ain't talking about that right now. Flash Gordon approaching. What do you mean, Flash Gordon approaching? Fumbleitis Poppy Flash Gordon picks up a first down inside Indy Territory. Oh. Come on! Do it again. That set up Brandon McManus for a 44-yard field goal through the uprights, and it's good. Broncos lead 6-0. Ensuing drive. Look how determined Matt Ryan is to get this football to Michael Arm Pittman. Homie was pumping that ball like four times. Two plays later, looks like Mixed Fortune is working in the Indianapolis Colts' favor because despite a little bit of butter fingers, it would fumble forward, recovered for a first down. Now in striking distance for the first time this half, Matt Ryan has an opportunity to make the Broncos pay. Wahoo. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. He threw it straight to the defense. Ah! Homie threw the ball straight to him. How didn't you see him? Flash Gordon approaching. Fingers. What is going on? He did it again. This man was on the verge of having five fumbles in five games. He's so lucky his knee was down. Although the Broncos were able to avoid a fumble, does that stop them from participating in the punting bonanza? Absolutely not. I can't. I, I simply can't. You need a shout out? Book me on cameo.com slash chiseled Adonis and get a shout out, birthday wishes, draft order for your fantasy football team. It don't matter. Book me. What are you waiting for? Two minutes left to go in this godforsaken first half. Matt Ryan over the middle's got Michael Arm Pittman. He's going to take it inside Broncos territory. But with the good always comes the bad for Matt Ryan after bringing them inside the 20. No, no please. No more, no more. Butterfingers, he gets sacked, fumbles on the play. It's scooped up by Quentin Nelson. He's going absolutely nowhere. Start writing the obituary right now. Matt Ryan is not going to make it to the end of the season, bro. This man getting fucked up, and it's only been five weeks. That's his 10th fumble on the year, tied for the most in NFL history through five games. You want to see me do it again? Dad, I'm scared. Go! Get the phone. Back to back plays. This man's on the ground. Police! Help! Help! Police! 
they'd have to settle for a 52-yard field goal just before halftime through the uprights, and it's good. We're going to the break with a 6-3 to three lead. Might I add, just before halftime on the ensuing kickoff, this nincompoop nearly fumbled the doggone football trying to make a play when you got seconds left to go. It doesn't make sense. Is everybody trying to play giveaway with the football? Does nobody want to win this game? The Colts have trailed in seven consecutive games at halftime. Matt Ryan is leading the NFL in turnovers past Joe Burrow for the most sacked quarterback in the league, and the Broncos only have two points. They scored all third quarter of the entire season. These horses fucking suck! <laughs> Into the second half we go. Can Russ start to cook? I dropped it. This man's hands just for decoration. This would have been a huge first down, but nobody doing their job. What happened to his hand? Broncos country, let's rock. <laughs> oh, shit. One of these quarterbacks going to end up pregnant at the end of the game with this lack of protection. All I can stand is, I can't stand this no more. Ensuing drive. Look at Matt Ryan. Look at Matt Ryan. This man about to die back there. Gets rid of the football somehow. He's got his man inside Broncos territory. Both offensive line units need to have knives to their neck at the conclusion of this game. 51-yard field goal attempt for Indianapolis to even up the score at six apiece through the uprights, and it's good. We've got a tie game. Following drive, Russell Wilson says, fuck it, somebody's down there. Let's it fly down the field. It's going to be caught by two Broncos, stolen by Cortland Sutton, and the biggest play of the game comes on a 51-yard double completion. But it would have never happened without the help of a zebra who tripped an Indianapolis Colt. What the hell? That damn Foot Locker employee interfered, and much to the chagrin of the Indianapolis Colts, he can't throw a flag of pass interference on himself. He's not a player. Homie must have had Cortland Sutton on his fantasy team or possibly selected Cortland Sutton on his parlay because he saw the score of the game. He took matters into his own hands. We could talk about incidental contact until the horses come home, but consider the situation in the game. This is a crucial point, and nobody's been able to put together offense, and this nincompoop's the reason why they get a 51 yard completion. Don't hate the player, hate the game, son. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> you want another one? Fucking kick. I'm not with you. Come here. Get what you fucking deserve. The Broncos have by far the worst red zone offense in the NFL. Once the end zone is in sight, they are just allergic. It's third and goal from the 16-yard line. Russell Wilson actually has a little time in the pocket. And who does he throw it to? The stands! I'm gonna kill myself! Going to kill myself, and it's your fault! Oh! Oh! Look at the dome on homie on the right. God damn. The hell is he thinking about? Everything? David Goggins got a doppelganger out here. Where does his scalp stop and his forehead begin? Head so shiny you could use it as an alternative for the graphic for the Mirror Force trap card. Brandon McManus tries a 34-yard field goal. Fuck out of here. I blocked it. Oh, heavens. The misery continues. The field goal was blocked. We're still tied at six. This fat son of a bitch. I blocked it. He's fat. Ensuing drive, third and 15. Looks like Matt Ryan's feeling charitable, giving out donations, donations, gifts, gifts, more gifts. Second pick thrown on the day to the same motherfucker. Fuck! Says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. The lie detector determined that was a lie. God damn it! This man out there looking like Neil O'Donnell. How you throw a pick straight to the same guy two times in the same game? You want to become an official member at Hold My Nuggets Incorporated? Head over to chiseledadonnashop.com and grab your merch. Stock is flying off the shelves. Get it before it's gone. Grab a hat. Let the people know your affiliation. Yet another opportunity for the Denver Broncos to take over. Russell Wilson looking towards the end zone. Fuck out of here. Homie would have had a touchdown, but Indianapolis doesn't want to see anybody score today. Yet another field goal attempt, this time through the uprights, and it's good. The Broncos are back in front, 9-6. to six. Following drive, third and six. Two minutes left to go in the third. Matt Ryan's got a punch. I guess not. Qualcomm. 
punch! If there wasn't a hard camera on Peyton Manning, this man would have went home at halftime. He doesn't want to still be here. Last play of the third quarter. Russell Wilson looking towards his left. He's going to dump it off to Boone. Couple of blockers out in front. He's going to pick up a first down and carry it inside Indianapolis territory. The second biggest play for the Broncos tonight. Broncos country, let's ride. You paid this man a quarter of a billion dollars. It's time for Russell Wilson to unleash his elite potential. Wahoo. What the hell was that? He threw it straight to the Indianapolis Colts. It's intercepted and returned to the 44-yard line. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it homie said fuck it kj hamler down there somewhere and overthrew mans by 15 yards he walking along the sideline in front of his receivers nobody making eye contact with this man broncos country let's ride broncos country let's ride broncos country let's ride broncos country let's ride broncos country Let's ride. Melvin Gordon about to run this man fade right now. That's the same way Judas looked at Jesus. Russell came to the Broncos talking about multiple championships. He getting a gawk gawk 9,000 from Sierra only to play this piss poor. Either that Gatorade bottle is filled with Michael Jordan's secret stuff or it's got arsenic one way or another. Russell Wilson better do something because on the next carry, Melvin Gordon's going to turn around and fuck. Yeah. Look out behind you. Yeah, come here. Ah. <laughs> Matt Ryan still getting fucked up. It's my turn. Uh, Jesus Christ. We have you surrounded. Come here. Ah. <laughs> I want to go home. But I cannot see I'm legally blind. I'm an innocent bystander. Do you need my glasses to see? In some bizarre genjutsu, the crowd is actually getting on their feet to make a little bit of noise on third down. It's time to reveal your appendage, Matt Ryan. He finds Mo Alley Cox. Well, the Broncos are lesbians. They would deny him. Mm, I stopped short. This game has combined for 15 points, 12 punts, 12 penalties, 3 turnovers, and 9 sacks. Killing roaches is more entertaining than this football game. Under 5 minutes left to play. Hand off to Boone. Couple of blockers out in front. Carries it inside Colts territory. And now the Denver Broncos are cooking. Fourth and two. Why kick a field goal and extend this horrifying game? Let's go for it and pick up the first down, says Russell Wilson and Hackett. They extend their drive. Few plays later. Wilson the son, he's gonna tell Happy Gilmore, get your bitch ass off of me, pussy! Stiff arm him into the dirt and tells him he's just a little bit too small. You thought because you robbed the defensive player of the year from TJ Watt, you'd get respect? You're beneath us now, says Sutton. That's all I needed. That's all I needed for him to do that. And it, it became personal with me. Third and four, a first down ends this game right here. Russell Wilson says, I'd like it to continue. Give me that. It's intercepted by Stephon Happy Gilmore in the end zone. The Colts are going to get the football back. Boy, ain't no fucking way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Somebody explain to me how a multiple-time pro bowler, a consensus top 10 quarterback in the league, throws this pass at this stage of the game. In prime time. Look at the setup here. The offensive line all did their job. Russell Wilson can run for a first down. Even if he gets stopped, it takes enough time off the clock to take it to the two-minute warning, give you a six-point lead, and let your defense, who has been shutting down Indianapolis all day, do their job. But you throw a bad ball into the hands of the 2019 Defensive Player of the Year. What the f what was he thinking? Broncos country, let's rock. Broncos country, let's rock. Broncos country. He was special. Be careful though. It's spicy. Mr. Unlimited. Yeah, you gotta be unlimited. You know, you gotta have a thought process of being unlimited. They paid this man $242 million and he's absolutely lost his mind. He went nine years without a losing season and now he out there playing like a bum. Two minutes left to play. Colts football. No timeouts remaining. <laughs> Matt Ryan stripped from behind, but he falls on top of the football to keep the game alive for Indy. Bradley Chubb nearly bailed out his Broncos. I'm gonna come. Uh.
Yes. Very next play, the pass rush nearly gets Ryan again. Somehow gets the football out of his hands. It's caught at the 47. The Colts hustle back to the line. Ryan over the middle got his man again inside Broncos territory. In a situation where they have no timeouts, they hand the football off and it's carried inside the 20. Third and six, Ryan says, I want it all. He throws it to the Broncos mascot. And rather than have a victory in regulation, the Colts are going to set up a field goal to force overtime through the uprights and it's good nobody wanted this nobody wanted this never in my life have i seen a football game go into overtime and the home team is leaving early do you recognize how trash you gotta be for your fan base to say i don't want to watch you anymore you would have thought they was getting blown out but it's tied up entering an extra period this is unprecedented in the history of sports Where are you guys? The first time in five years a game goes into overtime without a team scoring a touchdown. Both quarterbacks seen more sacks than medics checking for testicular cancer. Ain't nobody trying to watch overtime. Both these horses fucking suck. button and make sure to subscribe also follow me on all social media networks instagram twitter and facebook at chiseled adonis make sure you get your fix of all chiseled adonis content into the extended menstruation we go matt ryan looking towards his left he's got his man first down across the 40 very next play hand off to jackson he's gonna carry it inside broncos territory think fast it's a screen to campbell why would the broncos play so far back huge pickup for the colts how you gonna try to get the crowd hype? Half of them done left, stupid. Third and four, Matt. Why are you running? Why are you running? Come back here, you little son of a bitch. Mm, I stopped short. He'd failed to pick up the first down, 48-yard field goal to take the lead. It's through the uprights, and it's good. And for the first time tonight, the Colts have a lead. But this ain't the overtime of old. The opposite team has an opportunity despite the field goal. For the second time on prime time, Russell Wilson has an opportunity to go down the field and claim victory for his ball club. In overtime, he's 6-5-1. and one. When he gets an opportunity with the football, might I add, if he fails to get the job done, this would be the first game in NFL history where there's two starting quarterbacks with multiple Pro Bowl selections and they both fail to find the end zone. Broncos country, let's ride. Here comes Russell Wilson. This is what they pay you the big money for. Flash Gordon approaching. What do you mean? Flash Gordon approaching. Flash Carries it to the 49. Very next play. Play action again. Going down the field. has got Jerry Judy wide open. The pride of Haiti brings the Broncos inside the 15. In two plays, the Broncos offense has been ignited. Flash Gordon approaching. What do you mean? Flash Gordon approaching. Flash they needed a first down, but Melvin Flash Gordon would be participating in the Frank Costanza Challenge, guys. Mm, I stopped short. Why settle for a field goal with the game on the line? Who wants to play for a tie? We play for the win. Fourth and one. You only need a yard. Why are they in shotgun? I don't know. Maybe it's a draw. It's not. Russell Wilson game on the line over the middle. Game over. Why, God, why? I don't know. How in God's name do you make this mistake again? All you needed was a yard. You had more than enough space to run. You didn't even need to line up in shotgun. But you throw the ball to the man that's blanketed by the 2019 Defensive Player of the Year. You throw it into traffic. When on the other end of the field, K.J. Hamler was wide open. Mays was by himself so long people thought he grew up an orphan. He literally won his route by four yards and he didn't have the football come his way. Are you okay? Honey, are you okay? Okay, okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm here to tell you right now. I'm mad, man. God damn it. Why? Mother. Fuck. Shit. 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 Pricks. Shit. 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 Shit.
I hate you. I hate you, man. Only thing Russell had to do was look off the safety, but this man stared at Coatlin Sutton the entire play. They told us let Russ cook, but all he doing is standing in the kitchen like... Broncos country, let's rock. Broncos country, let's rock. Broncos country, let's rock. Loves it. Mm. It's gonna be good. Excuse me. <coughs> Fucking hell. You're yeah. pissed, are you? I'm no, not. Fuck it. Look at me. Look at me in the eyes. Not as pissed as I am. You fucking are. Donkey. This man got the stadium ablaze from the dumpster fire that is his offense. What do the Broncos and Lakers have in common? Trading for washed Russells. Look at Russell Wilson's head the entire time. He didn't even let the play develop on the right side of the field. He didn't give a hoot about that because he knew he was throwing to Sutton. This man's got his helmet on backwards. The three on his jersey stands for Russell Wilson three and out. The Broncos leading Russell tonight was the fucking horse from the entrance. You needed one yard, one yard, and you lined up in shotgun. You have to run the football here. But don't take it from me. Let's let Richard Sherman talk about it. The final play, you got to run the ball again. Like, I, I mean, I wish I had Marshawn up here. Like, one yard. You need one yard. Run the ball. Run, what? run the ball. It, it, and CT, he's triggered. All he has he's to triggered. do is run the football. Like <laughs> necessary criticism. I'm not, you know, I've said enough criticism for him. But God dang it, run the dang ball. Like learn well, from I, your mistakes. I don't. Can somebody fill me in? What is he yeah. referring to? I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> Have you been in this situation before? It's on downbeat. It's in the pocket. Hmm. Russell Wilson, you and your bum ass team gonna take out your Metro cards and get aboard the L train. You lose. Out here. What's the dinner? Fresh hot ales. I should really put y'all in the death note, but I ain't gonna do it because next week might be worse. Yo, tell me with this. And to conclude this year's Chisel the Donuts Awards, I would like to put out an APBPSA uh, disclaimer to Roger Goodell, the countless, you know, NFL various networks, and the executives and all of the front office of both the Denver Broncos and Indianapolis Colts. Let me tell you something right now. Lean in real quick. I need you to disband putting on games like this. I recognize in hindsight, if you had a choice, you probably would have flexed this game and removed them because you never know going into games who's going to perform at such a shit level. But let me tell you something right now. You need to anticipate teams that will perform. Moreover, games that will possibly be bangers. I recognize it's any given Sunday. It's 60 minutes. Every single team can go out there and have a great game or they can mess around and have a bad game. But this was historically bad. Let me tell you something. I considered no longer watching football. I would have rather watched competitive curling than watch the goddamn Denver Broncos and Indianapolis Colts. I had to sit there live commentating on this game, trying my best to make it through at every single play, every single field goal, every single continuation and extension of this game made me feel as if suicide was a better decision than watching these two teams play football. So for both the Colts and the Denver Broncos, put your mother fucking heads back down for being the worst game this side of the millennium and arguably the worst game in NFL history. And ladies and gentlemen, that now concludes your 2022 Chiseled Adonis Awards for the NFL season. I hope you truly enjoyed yourself. It was much different than the prior years. There are some awards that did not quite make it into the cut this year. There are some awards that have made a resurgence. There are other awards that are a common staple, but one way or another, I am excited for this upcoming season for the 2023 Chiseled Adonis Awards. But before we get there, the 2023 Chiseled Adonis commentary, and I'd like to make an announcement. There's going to be a 
a switch in how we go about the commentary because as you know, we have our Thursday night special. We have our Sunday afternoon compilation of all of the games played at one and four and then ultimately we have our prime time. But this year, we're doing one video per week. I want to combine and compilate all of the games into one set video that will be released, if I'm not mistaken, most likely on Tuesday and or Wednesday for your viewers' pleasurement. Why? Because I want everything in one place. I don't want individuals to sit around and say, man, I'd like my team to get a spotlight, or I felt like this game was a stinker similar to what transpired with the Colts and the Broncos, so everything will be compiled in one fell swoop video and you will enjoy it 2023 season will be the best of the commentary so stay tuned for that but once again i am your founder and chairman of hold my nuggets incorporated live from the west wing and hold my nuggets studios of course i am your host the diligent vigilant meticulous sagacious conscientious analytical methodical individual the chiseled adonis to all of our winners of the chiseled adonis awards congratulations if it just so happened to be an award that you should not feel prideful in unfortunately it's a congratulations for you that you could hope the following years you should not be a recipient of these terrible goddamn awards that you just so happen to go out there and earn so with that being said nancy isn't here so there's no need for me to tell her to head to the upper room because she's already there but from me to you to the denver broncos and the cults organizations to matt ryan tom Brown. Brady, Antonio Brown, and countless others. We can all say in unison, hold my nuggets. And everybody saying, suck my dick. Y'all have yourselves a good night. Yeah! 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 You mean to tell me you watched the entire video, but you haven't subscribed? Hit the subscribe! and become a member on Patreon or on YouTube to get access to the Discord. We're waiting for you in the Shadow Realm. Just do it! Make your dreams come true! Please! Please! What are you waiting for, huh? Oh my god.